This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Yo guys, what is up? Max in our Wonderlands video, and today we are taking a first look at the Stabumancer's skill tree. Now, I recorded my very first impression of opening up the Stabumancer skill tree for the first time and reading through the skills, which I'm going to play for you guys right now. And then after that, I'm going to talk a little bit after the video and have a little bit more gameplay of my impressions and kind of my thoughts on the Stabumancer after playing it for a ton of hours. Hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe on that, guys. Let's get right into it. Okay, this is the grave or the stab up answer off to a great start the fate maker's critical hit chance is increased increased critical hit chance by 30 percent that's wild so how crits work in this game is everything can crit everything has a base crit chance status effect dots have a chance to crit your melee attacks your your action skills your guns, your spells, melee, everything can crit. Um, the the specking into the stab of answer as your first or as your secondary class gives you 30% increased critical hit chance. That's pretty crazy. Note, this is not base 30. It says increased. So if I go over to my hero points, let's see. So like what that basically means is early game. That's not going to be that impactful. Um... Because look, we have basically 5% crit chance with our 30%. Let's spec some. Let's just go all crit chance. All our hero points into that. And then we're at 7.4% 7, 7 critical hit chance. So obviously, with my limited points at level 9, that 30% isn't going to make much of a difference. But once we get to more end game things or better items or better rings and amulets i wonder if we could get up to 100 percent crit chance on just everything that would be uh that would be unbelievably strong we also have our stab amancer power uh which is our power is going to increase our damage of the things that we do and then let's take a look at our skill tree so we've got our two action skills ghost blade the Fate Maker throws out a Ghost Blade, which spins in place, dealing melee damage. The action skill does melee damage? The action skill does 70% of your melee weapon's damage. Melee damage frequency is the same as your melee weapon. What? Wait. So the attack speed and the stats of your weapon... The damage of it, the attack speed, maybe the special effect, maybe the element affect the ghost blade. Um, that sounds unbelievably strong. <laughs> uh, I was actually not very excited for this, uh, just because it looked like invisibility was gonna be way better. But the fact that you can, this does your melee damage. Well, I will have to include some gameplay in this video. This isn't just gonna be a skill tree. We'll do some gameplay too, because we gotta do some testing. Um. This is the Ghost Blade. Okay, it spins. It's got a pretty long duration. Can I move it? Oh, you can flick it around and move it. That's sick. Okay, that actually seems really strong. I'm very excited for that. Um, Next up, we've got From the Shadows. The Fate Maker enters stealth, turning invisible while in stealth. All damage dealt is automatically a critical hit. I'm assuming... All damage not mean now you can use spells to guarantee crits but critical hits deal reduce damage so it's not a full critical hit it's a critical hit with slightly reduced damage from a full critical uh you would get eight seconds in this and your cooldown is 36 seconds eight seconds of that huh yeah. um that's gonna be something we're gonna have to use on enemies so we'll, we'll do some gameplay on that next let's finish talking through the skill tree all right We've got Arsenal. Melee damage, spell damage, gun damage, 3%, up to 15 for each. That's pretty nice. Uh, haste. Melee attack speed is increased. Movement speed is increased. When the Fate Maker casts a spell, this bonus is doubled for a duration. So you cast a spell, and you get melee attack speed and movement speed, and when you do it again, it doubled. So looks like 12% base and then you cast a spell and you're at 24 percent movement speed and melee attack speed that's pretty nice melee attack speed kind of seems like it's actually going to be kind of an important thing 
which makes sense um, to be able to, to like spam your your weapon and hit things faster. Potent poisons. This is where I'm super interested. Obviously, everything is here is interesting, but we've never really had good status effects. And from when I was playing on Graveborn, I could tell that status effects were very impactful. And it looks like we might be getting a lot of status effects on the Stabomancer, which is super cool. Um, so status effect damage is increased. Status effect duration is increased. There's five points there. So it looks like you're getting 20% status effect damage and 40% status effect duration. That's really nice. 20% damage, 40% duration. We've got follow-up. Whenever the Fate Maker deals gun damage to an enemy, the Fate Maker's next melee attack deals increased damage. Okay, so it seems like so far it works the same with the Graveborn. Is that like left side is going to be... Let me guess a... Okay, left side's not too simple, but like crit damage, fire rate, melee stuff. Middle's probably more melee stuff. And then right side's probably more status effect stuff. Graveborn was like left side's health, middle spells, right side companions. Um, but our next skill, whenever the Fate Maker deals gun damage to an enemy, the Fate Maker's next melee attack deals increased damage. Uh, this effect can stack. So basically you shoot, and then your next melee attack will deal increased damage, and... I can't yet see how many points you can put into this. Um, I'm assuming that's a 5 out of 5, though. Next up, while moving, the Fate Maker gains increased damage dealt. The faster they move, the greater these bonuses, the bonuses they receive. So we've kind of got, like, Violet Speed, Violet Momentum. Uh, Stabomancer is looking very similar to, like, a Zane, in a way. Um, the faster they move, the greater the bonuses. This was really good in Portal Lands 3. We'll see how strong it is in this game exploit their weaknesses whenever the fate maker applies a status effect to an enemy the affected enemies take increased damage from all sources for its duration this effect stacks per unique status effect whoa well we don't know yet how easy it is to get bonus status effects like you could in borderlands 3 where you could be doing all elements at the same time but that seems like a very strong damage increase here let's spec i'm curious um let's spec into spell melee and gun damage seems nice so that's six percent per unique status effect i think there's five unique status effects uh so 30 you get 30 increased damage on enemies that seems very strong <laughs> if you can get multiple status effects even six percent damage increase from all sources that's nice that is nice to have super easy to activate as well as long as you're using elemental things while moving the fate maker gains increased damage dealt that seems like a nice skill to spec into and then gun damage next up whenever the fate maker deals melee damage their fire rate and spell damage are increased for a duration so it seems like you're not just like a melee character or you could be but you're incentivized to use all your things you're gonna get more um melee damage when you use your guns you're gonna get whenever you do melee damage you're gonna get that fire rate and spell damage increase for a while uh so you're kind of seems like a jack of all trades which would be kind of fitting with the whole like kind of a zane character zane mixed with with flack um kill skill the fate maker's next melee attack is a guaranteed critical hit for a short time for a short duration so whenever you kill someone your next melee attack is going to be a guaranteed critical hit which is pretty neat. Uh, the critical hits on weapons, let's say. Uh, this one doesn't have a critical effect. Oh, it does, 108. So this one's basically double damage whenever you crit, which could be really nice, because I'm assuming that you can boost that as well. Um, next up, we've got critical damage is increased. That's huge, especially if you can get ridiculous high crit chance, then basically all of your damage you're going to be dealing is just more. The Fate Maker can now shoot and sprint at the same time, gains a chance to evade incoming damage while moving. The faster they move, the greater the bonus. 10% evasion at default walk speed. That's just to ignore damage. At default walk speed, you have 10%. That's got to be a one out of one, right? If that's more than a one out of one skill, my goodness, you're going to be hard to kill. Because <laughs> you could go like full movement speed, run around really fast, and basically not take damage. And you can sprint and shoot. That sounds really fun. Okay. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I'm really curious if that is, uh, if you can put more than one point into that. 
uh, contagion. Whenever the Fate Maker applies a status effect, there is a chance it spreads to nearby enemies. This is like Amara's Wildfire. If no enemies are nearby, apply a different random status effect to the initial enemy instead. That's great. I really like that. So you're going to have a basic, like, that synergizes super well with exploit their weaknesses. I like that a lot. Wildfire on Amara spreads status effect, but if there were, if you're shooting a boss, there's literally no point in it. This is a 50% chance of apply to status effect for when you do one to then... Oh, sorry. I misread that. So it's got a spread chance that'll be, like, applied to the same target, and the dot damage of the new status effect will do 50% of the applied status effect. But you would still probably activate exploit their weaknesses for getting big damage increase. That sounds really great for bossing. Really, really great. And it seems like it's for all st all things. The effect of enemy takes increased damage from all sources. I think that's a team buff as well. Um, all right, we're getting close to the end here. Critical hits grant increased damage dealt. Whoa. This effect can stack melee critical hits grant additional stacks. So you're just going to deal more damage when you critical hit for 12 seconds with a stack duration of 25 stacks. Wow. So you're just going to be critting all the time and all the, your critting is going to make you deal more damage for your crits to deal more damage. Next up, uh, I didn't miss anything, right? No, okay. Uh, uh, we've got melee critical hits apply a random status effect. Status effect damage is 10% of melee damage dealt. That's interesting. So it looks like it's a, a dot guaranteed off of a crit, which will do a percentage based of your max melee damage. That seems nice. Uh, that's very cool. I don't think that seems quite as strong right off the bat, but all these, all these like status effects, if you're, if you're guaranteed critting in From the Shadows, this is a guaranteed crit you just keep stabbing something and you could just keep applying a status effects and those status effects could apply more status effects and then you're going to keep doing more damage to it uh that sounds insane <laughs> stabbing mats are shaping up to be really cool looking and then the final skill we've got executioner's blade gun and spell critical hits have a chance to create an ethereal blade above the target that will impale them after a short delay Ethereal Blade deals melee damage based on the Fate Maker's equipped melee weapon. So whenever you score a critical hit with a gun or a melee or a gun or a spell, you have a chance to create a blade. The blade does a hundred percent of your melee weapon's damage. And based on the Fate Maker's equipped melee damage. It does melee damage. I'm so curious. There are so many melee passives. Like melee attacks restore percentage of your spell cooldown. If this, first off, it doesn't say that there's any internal delay on this. Like there shows no cooldown. If you hold a monarch, for example, there's probably not a monarch in this game. But if you hold a monarch in freaking from the shadows and you're guaranteed critting on every single crit, are you just going to be constantly dealing all that crit damage plus all the blades that are coming down that are going to do melee damage? And if we know anything about melee damage is it can get pretty crazy and it's probably going to get pretty crazy in this game. That sounds like an absurd gapstone. <laughs> um, obviously, we'll see. But this is all very exciting stuff. Who knows what's going to be strong and what interactions will interact with what yet because obviously we can't get to this yet. But that is a there's a lot of potential with that if it's as strong as i think it might be uh to constantly be dealing melee damage and during your you could basically get tons of crit chance and crit damage uh very cool um you're basically like a human face puncher <laughs> you shoot your guns and blades will come out and deal melee damage for you you don't need a face puncher because you basically have weapons when you shoot any weapon you'll create a face puncher blade to come and hit things that sounds nuts um we're gonna probably go do some gameplay and i'll give some impressions of these skills so i hope you guys enjoyed those like initial impressions of this skill tree now i want to talk having played a ton of the character what it's like playing stabomancer and my thoughts so 
First off, Ethereal Blade, the blade that you summon that spins around that does melee damage, does the element of the weapon that you have equipped. So if you have a melee fire axe equipped, your Ethereal Blade that spins around will then deal fire damage. It does not get the passive of the weapon. Like, for example, if the passive is like every melee hit, you restore health. It won't do that for you, but it will deal the elemental damage type of the weapon that you have equipped. So you can change the damage of the action skill at any point. And I really, really liked Ethereal Blade. It felt good to use. The damage on it felt good. And I'm sure it's only going to get better the better melee weapons you get. Now, originally playing with Stabamancer... I've been a little underwhelmed with the actual melee damage that you deal. It, it felt like spells and guns were really, like, kind of equal um, in their damage. Guns a little bit more, but both were doing a ton of damage, and then melee was kind of below both of those. Um, and I was a little worried about Stabamancer until you see how the entire class comes together once you get the capstone. You have so many skills, like your melees inflict a status effect, or um, whenever you do a melee attack, you're going to get increased gun damage and spell damage. So many things are kind of relying on you to use your melee to really take full advantage of that character. And sometimes if you want to just shoot your gun, that can kind of get in the way of your gameplay loop, especially because Stabamancer really doesn't have any sort of healing or any way of staying alive besides invisibility, killing things, and evasion. Think about how Flak plays, but even Flak has like health regen. There's no health regen on this character. So you gotta kill things quickly. But everything comes together once you get to that capstone because now everything you do, your spells and your guns, which what, like I said before, are better damage dealers at the moment, at least from what I've played, um, everything that you do can do melee damage. You're basically turn your spells and your guns into a face puncher uh, because you're gonna be summoning those ethereal blades whenever you crit or you have a chance to summon them. And then the whole skill tree comes together because now instead of having to run up to someone and hit them with your blade to get more like gun damage and spell damage, all you have to do is shoot them with your gun and then you're gonna get more gun damage. Or if you shoot them with a spell, you'll call a blade and now they've got a status effect that's based off of your melee weapon. So Stabamancer is very cool, but it feels like it's char a character, at least for my initial impressions, that's really going to come together once you're further into the endgame. Kind of how Flack, like, was one of those characters that once you get to the endgame, like, just becomes an absolute monster. I think Stabamancer, once you get your synergies, your pieces of equipment, and you get that capstone like truly truly comes together and i really was enjoying this character it i did feel squishier than playing graveborn and i think that's a given but the damage potential of this class is really strong and i could see a lot of people coming into this class for the capstone to have a ton of synergy with other melee characters that are probably going to have even more melee skills like stabamance or berserker with all the melee skills you're just gonna be constantly doing melee damage regardless of like what you're dealing uh seems really cool and i hope you guys enjoyed some of the gameplay that i'm showing and also this first skill tree impression i have so many wonderlands videos on the way i wanted to like keep these first ones um just kind of like more overviews but tons of stuff on the way guys if you want to see more wonderlands content we are so close to 200k i will catch you on the next one guys stick around for an ad from skillshare who sponsored this video thank you to them i'll catch you on the next one guys take care peace Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, what you're seeing on screen is me making my first ever YouTube thumbnail in Adobe Photoshop. I've been making all my thumbnails on Adobe Spark, which is like a simpler version of Photoshop, and I joined Skillshare for the intention of learning how to use Photoshop. It just, it always seemed too scary and daunting for me. But Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of classes, and I took their class on Photoshop, which was broken down into so many different sections that I could kind of go to the section that was relevant to me and learn about it. And they also have projects that you can, while you're watching someone teach you Photoshop, you can work along with them and use the same image. I found it really helpful and I wanted to show you guys my progress and the thumbnail that I made for this video. If you want to try learning a new skill, you can use my link to sign up for a free trial to Skillshare now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care. Peace.